psychedelics and ketamine have revolutionized our approach to mental health. It's, it's really is a, a new paradigm of healing via powerful, transformative experiences rather than taking a daily medication for the suppression of symptoms. And in treating uh, people with depression with ketamine, I've literally seen so many lives transformed with this treatment. Ketamine is a medicine that was synthesized in 1962, a new unique class called disassociatives that separate your consciousness from the mind and body. It was FDA approved in 1970 as an anesthetic and today is one of the most widely used and safest medications in the world. It's on the World Health Organization list of essential medicines. Modern clinical trials began about 20 years ago and it's been used widely for the treatment of depression in the United States over the last decade. The uh, psychoactive effects of ketamine include a sense of awe, positive mood, altered perception, altered cognition, an altered sense of space and time, and paradoxicality, which is the experience of feeling like you're aware of everything that exists, but it's also nothingness at the same time and a disassociation, detachment from both the body and the sense of self, and sometimes accompanied by an experience of unity with something larger. Ketamine is a powerful treatment for depression, even in patients that fail conventional standard therapy with psychotherapy, multiple antidepressants. About 70% of them will respond within hours to a single dose of ketamine, and about a third go into remission. A single dose of ketamine can decrease suicidal thoughts. The mechanism of action includes uh, increasing neuroplasticity, and that's increasing the number of branches between and the connections between brain cells. This translates into a flexibility and resilience in our patterns of thought, our feelings, and our behavior. Chronic stress and depression cause some areas of the brain to be hyperactive and some areas to have less activity. This is normalized by ketamine. It also resets something called the negative reward network. And this is a part of your brain that punishes yourself. And that's actually adaptive. If you think about it, if you're going to hunt for food and you don't find any food, or you're going to find a mate and you don't get any sex, you should be punished because then you'll adapt your behavior. People with chronic stress and depression uh, can have this area of their brain turned on all the time, and they're constantly feeling hopeless and helpless and uh, negative mood, and uh, ketamine normalizes that. The experience itself is the powerful, transformative, positive experience can have positive effects on, on the mood. And in the psilocybin research, some of the researchers call this inverse PTSD. We all know that very brief but powerful negative experiences, physical or sexual trauma, even if 15 minutes can have long-lasting effects on your life and your nervous system. And likewise, very brief but powerful, meaningful, positive experiences can do the same in, in reverse. Our current research project here in Santa Fe, in collaboration with Christus St. Vincent's Cancer Center and New Mexico Cancer Care Associates, is to treat death anxiety in patients with terminal cancer diagnosis with ketamine. Death anxiety can include uh, regret about the past, uh, anxiety about the uncertainty of the future, uh, fear of the loss of self. As we've seen today, uh, the classic psychedelics are very powerfully effective for this. And there's good reason to expect that uh, ketamine may be as well. Uh, we already know that it's a powerful treatment for depression, anxiety, and pain. And it has some overlap with some of the psychoactive effects of the, the classic psychedelics. A transcendental experience, whether it's spontaneous or drug-induced, can increase the sense of attention to the present moment and 
it can give a conscious or unconscious sense of connection to and continuity with the circle of life, a reminder that you are not only a wave, but part of that ocean. Our ancestral environment was a gym for our physical body. Our hunter-gatherer ancestors, they didn't do Pilates. Their life made them physically fit. But our ancestral environment was also a gym for our minds. Our current psychological understanding of stress comes from experiments done on animals in cages. Animals in cages are socially isolated, isolated from their natural environment, and they become stressed, they become depressed, and vulnerable to addiction. We've heard about these experiments where uh, rats are given the choice between cocaine or water in, in a cage, and they'll just choose the cocaine until they die. There was a great experiment in the 90s called Rat Park, where the researcher gave the rats a positive, stimulating environment. Lots of great food and cheese, lots of awesome rat toys and other rats to play with and have sex with. And they had cocaine and water. And, uh, and they would dabble in the cocaine, but they didn't become addicted. What is our current society becoming if not a bunch of isolating cages. And as uh, Lily Tomlin uh, once said, the problem with the rat race is that even if you win, you're still a rat. <laughs> what we need to do is try to recreate positive social and physical environments that have positive effects on our minds. Psychedelics and ketamine by Increasing attention to the present moment and increasing our sense of connection to our world can help facilitate this transformation. Ultimately, I believe that to really understand our state of global suffering, we need to listen to our inner chimp and try to understand where we came from to understand where we are now. In doing so, we see the importance of connection to each other, and to the universe that we're part of. Thank you very much.